It's Mark from the United States. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, Mark from the States. How are we doing today? I'm doing fantastic. I hope you are as well. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, today, you know, I love World War II history. I love learning about uh, British involvement in World War II, of course. And here's a story about hunting a pocket battleship. Not too familiar with that term on exactly what type of vessel that is. This is by the great people at Yarn Hub. Please go uh, subscribe and like and share and watch the videos, support their channel. The link will be in the description to this video and to their channel. So please go over there. And <clears throat> In fact, I encourage you to go watch it first. That way you can come back and, and then watch it with me and, and uh, answer uh, things that I'm not going to understand, like what is a pocket battleship. <laughs> um, th these are animated, but I swear they have gotten so good. Um, they're so talented over there that it's like watching film, like humans, real people. Does that make sense? Obviously, you 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 know it's it's animated, but it's so good so good and I've been watching this channel for a while now and it's uh, you could just over the years have just seen the just how much better each episode is getting it's just incredible the work they do so they deserve your support um, so please go over there and do that I hope everybody's cool um, I've got this big fake couch here uh, I would that I would love for you all to come sit with me and watch this. Uh, I hope everybody's doing well, and uh, let's get into it. This is uh, Aaron Hubs hunting a pocket battleship. The west coast of South Africa. Have you heard about the German? Yeah. They sunk another ship south of us last week. What? We're being shelled. We're under attack. Tell the captain. What the hell was that? At the bridge, Captain William Stubbs is already on full alert. His binoculars reveal a terrifying sight. All right, so Captain William Stubbs, I want to go back. I want to just, if I would missed anything there at the beginning, I, I think the video jumped ahead a little bit. Um, <clears throat> it's the 2nd of December, 1939, on a British there. cargo liner off the west coast of South Africa. Okay. 1939, uh, September, first, basically first parts of the war, um, is, oh man, here we go, all right. Have you heard about the German? Yeah. They sunk another ship south of us last week. What? We're being shelled. We're under attack. Tell the captain. What the hell was that? At the bridge, Captain William Stubbs is already on full alert. His binoculars reveal a terrifying sight. Stalking them is a 16,000 ton German monster, a heavy cruiser sized ship armed with battleship sized 11 inch guns. A oh. pocket battleship. Okay. Oh. Smaller vessel with the larger guns. Got it. Makes it quicker. Uh, more maneuverable. Yeah, I can see the issue here, especially for this. Uh, uh, what is the ship's name? The Doric Star? Okay. Oh, power! Aye, aye, sir. Send the distress signal. The small ship turns to flee, transmitting all the information they can in the last minutes they have left. Yeah, you're in trouble here. A light shines from the enemy, blinking in Morse code. They're ordering us to cease transmission. To hell with that. Keep transmitting. Make sure every ship in the region knows they're here. Aye, aye, sir. Captain Stubbs keeps watching the enemy growing on the horizon. The ship's massive 280 millimeter guns are aiming straight towards him. He recognizes that profile. It's the Admiral Graf Spee. It's a Spey. Put that in the transmission. Pocket battleship Graf Spey. Yes, sir. 
they keep sending all the information they can, dragging on the encounter, until the fearsome warship is right on top of them. Continued resistance would be dangerous. Stubbs has no option dangerous. but to surrender. Cut power and stop transmitting. It's over. The Doric Star falls quiet. Aboard the German warship, Captain Hans Wilhelm Langsdorff watches as his men board the small cargo ship. They take the crew captive and bring them aboard the heavy cruiser before proceeding to ransack the ship and set up scuttling charges. It's a practice procedure at this point, one that Langsdorff is all too happy to see completed with professionalism. Good gemacht. Back on the upper deck, Captain Stubbs is singled out and taken to the brig. Behind him, massive explosions wash across the waves, followed by cheers from the German sailors. Well, it could have been worse, I guess. But while the cargo hauler sinks into the abyss, thousands of miles away, a Royal Navy squadron hears its dying transmissions. Here we go. Sir, Graf Spee got another one. Commodore Henry Hardwood thinks over the new information. Bring the officers. Under his command are heavy cruiser Exeter and light cruisers Ajax and Achilles. Was the name Henry Hardwood? Was that the name? Um, hmm. Pretty smart by that Captain Stubbs, yeah? Or is that, that's probably just regular protocol maybe, but uh, at, least, at least they weren't sunk while on board, right? At least uh, they were taken off. It's gotta be crazy though, jeez. They're patrolling off the coast of South America, as far away from the scene of battle as they could be. The Graf Bay has been their target for months, but with this transmission, Harwood gets the feeling they can finally bring its rampage to an end. There's a change of plan. The Graf Bay claimed another victim at approximately 13 hours yesterday. I suspect South American traffic will be their next target. We need to be ready. I agree, sir. But where? I get the feeling they'll be moving to... Die Mündung des Rio de la Plata. The River Plate. Dort ist sehr viel Verkehr. The choke point for all cargo ships headed for the Argentine and Uruguayan capitals. Dort gibt es einige Ziele. The 16,000 uh, uh, ton Graf Spee turns for its new destination, unaware that they're falling directly into Harwood's grasp. On the morning of the 15th of December, 13 days after the loss of the Doric Star, on board the heavy cruiser Exeter, Captain Frederick Secker Bell supervises the early morning activity. The squadron has been patrolling the estuary for days. Lookouts are on full alert, waiting for Harwood's prediction to come reality. It's been a tough wait. Initial sightings suggest they're coming, but they haven't heard anything new for days. Until... Confirmed smoke at 320. Sir, Harwood reports smoke at 320. Orders to investigate. Fly affirmative. Men to action stations. Load SAPs. Yes, sir. Exeter breaks west, approaching the mysterious ship. Slowly, the masts come into view. Then, the superstructure. And finally, the mighty guns. It's clear. The Germans are here. It's them. Tell Harwood we have a pocket battleship. Message confirmed. A pocket battleship at 3.20. The Exeter reports the enemy in sight. After months of chase and so many lost merchant ships, the showdown is finally here. Men to action stations, heading 30 degrees and full power. Tell Exeter to charge the ship from the south. We surround them from the east as practiced. Order from Ajax to Exeter. Charge the ship from the south. The rest of the force will execute the other flank. Permission to fire. But that fire shells over twice as heavy as their own. The Exeter is completely outclassed. But Bell trusts their strategic and numerical advantage. Flank speed. Keep the current heading. Yes, sir. Herr Kapitän, der Rauch am Horizont. It's a surprise, but he accepts the challenge. 
Nun gut, lasst sie uns treffen. The two ships keep approaching. The Graf Spee's path unchanged. Bao watches through the binoculars as two giant turrets traverse towards them. And then... Fire erlaubnis. The first shots of the Battle of River Plate wash across the waves. The shells striking the sea. <laughs> Exeter gunnery officer, Lieutenant Commander Richard Jennings remembers. The captain hailed me, not with the usual rigmarole of enemy in sight, bearing, etc., but with, there's the fucking sheer. There's the fucking sheer! Open fire at her! The Exeter <laughs> unleashes her guns with power. I apologize for that language. Uh, wasn't uh, expecting that, but that's that was pretty funny. I can only imagine in real life that the language is pretty salty at this point. <laughs> Full blasts, the shells fly across the sky, and they too fall short. Upon Exeter, things are getting frantic as the German warship finds its aim. Uh -oh. Shells splash closer and closer, littering the deck with deadly shrapnel. But the Exeter too adjusts their range. They fire their eight-inch batteries, striking the Graf Spee on the hull, but failing to no. pierce its armor. Deep within the German warship, Captain Stubbs of the Doric Dang. Star sits locked in a cell, alone and in silence. The shell strikes reverberating on the hull fill his ears. Well, that's gotta be unsettling. <laughs> uh, it's probably the last place you wanna be, I imagine. Um, at this point, I wonder if Captain Stubbs is already thinking of a way to help, how to disrupt, cause confusion. Maybe I don't know. I don't know what he. I don't know what he could do, but um, just yeah, a bad spot to be in for sure. <laughs> I love this animation. I love their their uh, style of telling the story. It's just, it's very engaging. Like I, I forgot that I'm even doing a watch along with all of you because I'm just wrapped up into the, into the visuals and the, and the, you know, the story of this battle. Crazy. In so return, good. the German salvo strikes just barely short. The massive shells detonate just a few yards away with awe-inspiring power. The shock and shrapnel so powerful, it takes no. out Exeter's radio. Sir, we lost contact with Harwood. It's too late to turn back now. Press on! Their shells impact the Graf Spee's deck, wrecking anti-aircraft guns, but they're doing nothing to slow the enemy Goliath. Bal watches the enemy with his binoculars. He sees the massive guns fire, launching their shells into the air. They linger for what seems like eternal seconds. Right. Bal doesn't have time to react. Not that it would have done anything, but he can feel it. That is a hit. Oh. The brutal impact takes out the turret, and the shrapnel flies towards the bridge. The fragments punch effortlessly through the bridge's thin walls to tragic results. Oh, no. Bell finds himself on the floor, dazed and surrounded by the fallen. Somehow, through sheer luck, he's largely unhurt. Can't There's no it. time to mourn. With determination burning in his eyes, Bal returns to his post, but finds his communications destroyed. At that moment, medical personnel rush in, but there's no time. He hurries past them, abandoning the bridge and making his way towards the aft conning station. Do you have comms here? No, sir, we've lost them. He looks around and calls for the first sailor he sees. You, come over. Have no comms. Tell the port torpedoes to prepare to launch when the enemy comes into view and the men at the rudder to steer 25 degrees The unknown starboard. sailor salutes and runs off. He rushes for someone else. On his way back to the bridge, Bell continues to recruit more sailors, re-establishing communications with the entire ship. You ask the damage control officer for updates. 
You, tell the magazines I have no comms. Any emergency they need, send me a runner and find someone to tell the same thing to the aft turret. In a matter of minutes, a team of messengers forms. From this point on, they become Captain Bell's only way to control the ship. But somehow, it works. The ship begins turning starboard and the torpedoes are ready to fire. Are you ready for a torpedo attack? Test your skills in ship-to-ship -ship action with World of War Royal Under Effect content. Uh, the game's dedicated join the 500 but the top four remaining guns oh, and they go. launch off off space imposing figure drifts into the torpedo sights and they launch off into the sea the four remaining guns fire with deafening fury above the waves while the torpedoes silently approach their target despite the messenger's best efforts though they oh, could no. never be quick enough for precise aim and the torpedoes completely miss. miss but bal refuses to stand down Keep the remaining two turrets continue to fire, spreading death and destruction across the Graf Spee's exposed elements, but doing little internally. Shell after shell strikes the German warship's heavy armor with little effect, ricocheting away or stopping dead in its tracks. So wild. Finally, they strike luck. At last, a round pierces the armor and punches straight through the lower decks and detonates deep within, destroying the uh -oh. fuel purification plant. There are no fires or floods, but in a single blow, the ship has been doomed. Unable to purify its vast stores of diesel, it has cut its usable fuel from days to hours. Not enough to return to Europe. But it does nothing to hamper their combat strength. Another salvo falls on the battered heavy cruiser. One shell slamming into the A turret and another punching through the hull. The second shell explodes within and sets fire to an ammunition storage rack. The brave sailors in the station rush for their extinguishers, quelling the flames before a catastrophic fire and explosion could be unleashed. The strike silences gunnery officer Richard Jennings' last turret. He decides to abandon his position as director of the control tower and runs through the chaos, reaching the Exeter's last working main gun. To the turret crew's astonishment, Jennings climbs to the top of the turret and starts shouting directions. <laughs> the chaos left. Was just Aim for their turrets! Jennings stares down the massive enemy warship in the distance as his turret takes aim underneath him. Fire! Jennings is blasted with gas and heat from the giant guns, but he takes it. Correct high! 100! Fire! Meanwhile, in the two light cruisers, Commodore Harwood is becoming impatient with the lack of results. All this time, they were executing the other flank, seeking to overwhelm the Graf Spee with the crossfire. But without communication with Exeter, they can't even find out if their aim is true. And now, he clearly sees that the Exeter is smoking and listing, while the Graf Spee stands seemingly unharmed. See, here, this whole time, it's like I, I totally forgot that they had the flank <laughs> it would just seem like it was just these two but since i couldn't communicate this is <laughs> my hands are getting clammy uh wondering how this turns out um it just must be terrifying absolutely must be terrifying uh, i know there's a lot of you who uh served on these ships or ships like them and uh, just, you'll have to chime in and uh, point out uh, what it's like. Especially, I, I feel bad for, uh, what was his name, St uh, Captain Stubbs, who's still in the hold here uh, of the spree. Spray, is that what it is? A graph spray. <clears throat> Uh, it's just remarkable. And what's crazy is this is taking place all the way down, you know, near South America. <laughs> so wild. With a sinking feeling, the truth dawns on him. They've been doing nothing. Heading 285, close the distance, proceed at utmost speed ships break formation and charge to Exeter's rescue. Aboard the Graf Spee, Langsdorff spots the incoming British. 
Das ist ein Torpedoangriff. Solkurs West. Stellt die Nebelwand auf. The Exeter isn't done yet. Heading 270. And They're their last turret to is being commanded by Damn. what seems like a madman riding atop. <laughs> but still, they Larry. chase after the Graf Spey, firing with what little they have and scoring hits across the superstructure. The Graf Spey turns all its guns towards them and they oh, open fire. Shoot. The massive volley falls short by the smallest of margins, oh, wow. creating a huge splash just in front of Jennings' face. But he's unfazed. You've got the range! He Fire! calls for more, but the gun doesn't move. What's going on? We've lost power. It can't traverse. The water has filtered through the damaged hull and short-circuited the turret systems. Bloody hell! We've lost the white turret. Tell the captain. Sir, white turret has malfunctioned. Captain Bell is furious, with fire in his eyes. I'm going to ram the bastard. It'll be the end of us, but it will sink him too. Order to ram it. Turn starboard. Starboard! The Exeter, in flames and out of options, turns to ram the enemy. You've got to be kidding me. But then, a salvo of shells brackets the Graf Spey. The light cruisers Ajax and Achilles have gotten past the smoke screen go. and have opened fire with vastly improved accuracy. Harwood is on them. They finally got him. Verdammt, sie haben die Reichweite gefunden. Captain Langsdorf pushes the Exeter to the back of his mind as the new challengers pummel the Graf Spey's upper deck with salvo after salvo. With damage and casualties mounting, Captain Langsdorf Orders a retreat. Fire einstellen. Volle Kraft voraus. Nehmt Kurs auf Montevideo. The Ajax and Achilles pummel the ship for another hour as the Graf Spey desperately sails for neutral waters. But they're too far away, and Harwood is determined to not let the ship slip away. What is our ammunition status? 20% remaining. Harwood is shocked. It's far less than he expected. If he carries on, he could have too little to defend himself if they happen to face another battle. Hold fire. Pull back and shatter them. They pursue the Graf Spey all the way to the neutral port of Montevideo, Uruguay. There, the prisoners of the Doric Star are released per international regulations. Oh, that's but cool. back with the Graf Spey, their problems were far from over. Upon their docking in Montevideo, Deceit and politics soon follow. The British begin broadcasting easy-to-intercept signals, suggesting that reinforcements are arriving. They've no fuel reserves to return home, no ability to fix the fuel plant, and strict orders not to let the ship become interned in Uruguay. There's only one apparent option, and that's to flee Argentina. But he believes a reinforced British fleet will stand in his way. Hmm. Ich glaube nicht, dass wir eine andere Wahl haben. On the 17th of December, the ship with only Langsdorff and 40 other men aboard moved out of the Uruguayan waters. It was a devastating blow to Langsdorff. High command blamed him completely for Admiral Graf Spey's end. Langsdorff wrote, I alone bear the responsibility for scuttling the Panzerschiff Admiral Graf Spey. I am happy to pay with my life for any possible reflection on the honor of the flag. Don't do it. Three days later in a hotel room in Buenos Aires, Don't do it. he took his gun and kept his word. No. The mighty ship burned wow. in shallow water for the next two days. Is that the actual photo of it? The huh. Wow, that's cool. The mighty ship burned in the shallow water for the next two days. Despite the lack of decisive victory, the battle was still considered a great success for the Royal Navy. Commodore Henry Harwood was promoted to Rear Admiral and knighted for his leadership. Wow. Captain Frederick Seckerbell wouldn't receive any Navy awards for his actions, but he and a good portion of Exeter's crew did get a hero's welcome from the oh. residents of the city of Exeter. Gunnery officer Richard Jennings, on the other hand, would be awarded 
the distinguished service cross for his actions and went on to command ships of his own. All three men would survive the war. Oh, Thanks again cool. to World of Warships. Check out the link in the description. Awesome. Go support Yarnhub. Love that channel. That story was so gripping and very enjoyable. Uh, great job over there, guys. Great job. Um, obviously didn't know the story. I don't know all the battles uh, from World War II, and that's so I love coming across something I've never heard of. It, it Things that stick out to me are, <clears throat> it, although I, I knew that it does happen and takes place, but all the way down there in South America, just, I mean, wherever there's water, <laughs> there there's uh, ships, but uh, uh, they mentioned that uh, there was a... Um, uh, a busy shipping lane there. So, um, yeah, wild, absolutely wild. It's just a cool video. I enjoyed that. I hope you, hopefully you did as well. Um, I just, you get so wrapped up in it <laughs> that I forget that I'm actually watching it with all of you. <laughs> um, so please go support Yarnhub subscriptions. Of course, video and channel will be in the description of this video. Uh, I'm blessed that they allow me to uh, react to these uh, wonderful uh, videos that they do. And, uh, and so um, they need our support. It's very important. Um, any of you have any thoughts on this? Um, I'm a little surprised that the captain and crew of the Exeter of HMS Exeter didn't get anything. I mean, come on. They were the main uh, protagonist in the story here. Um, they're the ones who took all the all the uh, nasty business from the Graf Spray the whole time. That's wild can't believe it well at least the town city of exeter uh showed their uh love but uh, still man that's kind of surprising um i hate to, it's just the fanaticalness of the nazis and i mean just just because you scuttle the ship you go and take your own life what an idiot but anyway pretty wild uh yeah, let me know. Let me know, uh, all of you who serve on ships, uh, a lot of uh, your thoughts on this stuff. It's uh, being uh, like Captain Stubbs, being stuck on that boat um, while in battle. I don't know what you do. <laughs> Pray, I guess. All righty, everyone. Hope you are all happy, healthy, and safe. And uh, we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye bye. Mark from the States, Mark from the States, it's Mark. And he's from.